isn't actually that cheap because I can send it to China. Now, my favorite little example of this, if you forgive me, is this guy. How many of you have got this guy in your pocket? Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> it is kind of brilliant, right? And even when you take it out of the dumbass case that I've got because I drop things all the time, it looks great, right? So Steve Jobs is a genius. How many of the technology, there's six critical technologies in this thing. How many of them does Steve invent? Zero. Can you mention, do you know any of them, So You seem to know this story. Touch screens, exactly. Who invented touch screens? United States Air Force, taxpayer dollars, called Lodestar. TCPIP, DARPA, secure communications in the event of a nuclear attack, backbone of the internet. What else have we got? GPS, United States Navy, global positioning satellites. You're seeing a pattern here. You paid for all this stuff. Where's your equity share? You didn't get it. We just gave it to the private sector. Because entrepreneurs are so awesome. Yeah, when they put it in a shiny box and we all go gaga. <laughs> but there is definitely value in this because if you left it to a bunch of geeks in Bell Labs, they would never have thought of this. I mean, that's the honest truth, right? You actually need these people to turn it into commercial products. That's how capitalism works. We were doing this in the 19th century. But here's the difference. Where is this made? And about 12 other countries. Now here's the interesting thing about the global supply chain that makes this possible from the touch screen to the chips to the plastic to everything. You can go on a website and calculate how much of this component is probably made by slave labor. Right? Disturbing but true. Because even Apple, who actually are a good company despite their tax dodging bullshit, they're really actually trying to clean out the supply chains, work with reputable factories, they're not into exploiting the workers, they're done, that's not their gig. But they can switch production from one Indonesian manufacturer to a Taiwanese manufacturer overnight and get the specs online in three days. What do you think the margins of those companies are? So what do you think the profits of Apple are? How much of the profitability of this resides in China at the end of the day? Six cents in the dollar. This is what Donald's upset about. 40 cents still goes to Cupertino, right off bat. Now, where do they put their taxes? And they pay an effective rate of 0.02%. In the 1970s, corporates used to pay 20% of taxes. Today, they pay 2%. Who's filling in the gap? Or we're dealing with budgetary austerity because no one has the balls to call them on it. Now, that's what's changed. You go back to David Ricardo for a minute. You've still got the competition. You have the competitiveness. You have capitalists squeezing labor. But labor was able to resist. Starting in the 1980s, they were no longer able to resist. And at first, we thought it was just those industrial workers. They were bad jobs anyway. We didn't care about that. It's fine. It's good that those people aren't doing that. What are they doing instead? They're working in Walmart. Knock yourself out. Then we got call centers, but you can't move services, can you? And so they started going from Indiana to India. And then after that, well, you know, you can't do that to my kids. My kids have a college education. Hold on to your seats. Of course you can do that. Now, at the end of the day, the reason we do this is not because of the inevitability of something called globalization. It's because of a massive failure of public policy and a massive failure of spine by the people who are meant to represent those people who don't, who represent Apple and Cupertino instead. Now that brings us all the way back to Shaw. Because remember the play, who's the guy who stumps up for the lease on the brothel in Brussels? A member of the industrial and aristocratic elite. As they say where I grew up, same shit, different smell. 